Hi, I'm Stephen Tallamy. In this video, I'm going to share how I kept track of multiple cues in the feature-length film Asking God. With nearly 50 cues in the film, it was important to keep track of progress in the project, from sending draft cues to the director to the final cue sheet. So in a previous video, I walked through some of the template files and each of the cue projects, but there is one more important project in this folder, and that is the master project. So what you'll see here is I've got a range of different audio tracks and each of the cues laid out. The top audio track is the dialogue track that came from the video itself. And then I've got music A and music B. And the reason why I have two of these tracks is because sometimes the cues did overlap. So you can see that I'm alternating between music A, music B, music A, music B. And this gives me an overview of all of the music in the film and allows me to see how each part is coming together. And by laying this out in this way, it meant that I could play cue by cue, but listen also the transitions between the cues to make sure that they were working well together. Now, I know some people use Pro Tools for this particular function, but because I don't have Pro Tools and I wanted to do everything in Logic, this is the method I used. So let's look at how we go about building one of these masters. Well, Similar to what we did with each of the cues, I'm going to start from that cue template. So here we have the 1M00 template. I'm just going to simply copy that and call it master. Now, if we load that up, and now all we need to do is just clear down all of the instruments that we have in the template. Now, all I need to do is just create that track A and B. Now, to bring all of the audio into this, it's actually quite a simple thing to do. We can just take the bounced out versions from the Logic project. So I'm going to just go back to the bounce files here. So these are all the WAV files that have come from bouncing out these projects in Logic. And one important thing about these is they have broadcast timecode in them, which is going to help us align it to the master project. So I'm just going to take the 1M11 and drop it onto Music A. It doesn't really matter where I'm going to drop it on the timeline because I'm going to use this function here, move to recorded position, and it will drop you exactly where that cue was. So if I take 12, drop that on B, move to recorded position, and you can see it's shuffling them. So the workflow I would have had would have been each time I finished a cue, I would render it out, drag and drop it into the master template and save it. So going back to the full project, let's have a look at some of the things that we can do with it. So a common thing is going to be to create a version of the queue with the video to send to the director for approval. So let's look how we do that. So I'm going to take this 1M21 and all I need to really do to create a video out of this is quite straightforward. First off, I'm going to mute Music B to make sure I don't have any overlap from the other queues. And then I'm just going to set the loop point around this particular queue. So you can do that here from navigate, set locators by selection and enable cycle, or just simply command U. So now all I need to do is file, movie, export audio to movie, give it a name and hit save, click OK, and you can see it's bouncing away that video. And now if we look on the file system, we have a movie file just for that section. So that's a really useful thing that we can be doing with this project. So an important next thing that I had to do with this template was deliver it to the dub engineer. Now I've got hidden here a couple of tracks that show those here. So the way the dub engineer worked on this project was he first went through all the dialogue and leveled that off and then he mixed the music on top of it. So here I've got a version of that dialogue mix uh, also imported into the same project so I can switch between what was in the editor's version through to this dub dialogue. Just to give an indication of how I thought the levels should be mixed together, I created some automation tracks here, which effectively moved the audio up and down for each of the different tracks to level against what I thought was a reasonable balance against that dub. Of course, the mix engineer could just use this as a guide or, or forget about it and mix it himself. So in this case, the dub engineer wanted an AAF format delivery. That's pretty easy to do from this project. We just go up to file, export, and then we have project as AAF file. And what that does is it renders out all of the tracks as split stereo. Let's have a look at what that looks like. So this is actually the Google Drive in which I delivered the soundtrack. And you can see I've got two versions here. One is the broadcast WAV file. So that's just the original versions of everything with the timecode embedded. And then here's a version of it as AAF. So you can see there's the AAF files. And then in here, we have all of the split files. And this was what was generated by Logic. So one of the final uses of this template that I found really useful was to be able to use it as a way of filling in a cue sheet. 
Now, a cue sheet is going to be really important in terms of making sure you get paid any royalties when the film is aired. So let's have a look at the cue sheet that I built for Asking God. So this spreadsheet is basically a version of what PRS provide as a template cue sheet. And all I've done is really split that over multiple tabs and had some fancy formulas to help me do some of the grunt work. So we've got the production details, the music details, and the guidance. And this is all coming straight from PRS. Obviously there are different versions of this template depending on who your PRO is. So if we look at the music details, you can see we've got the full list of all the cues. We've also got some other music here that I didn't write that was added into the film. So a lot of this is actually driven off some lookup tables that I have in this technical detail spreadsheet. And this was actually the main spreadsheet I was using during the project, which helped me organize all of the cues and put any notes in them. So you can see I've got all of the lists of all the cues, and then I've got a space for notes, which currently is blank, but as I was going through the project, I would have made notes from the director of what I needed to do, things that needed to be improved uh, into that column. The important thing is all of these time codes and durations because these are actually what feeds the music details sheet. So you'll see up here we've got some fancy formula that is looking up from that technical details sheet. So most of this should just auto generate when we've got the technical details correct. So let's look at how I use the master project to fill in this cue sheet. So we've got the cue here and you can see I've got time code in and length and these are two fills I can grab straight from Logic. So this is really straightforward to do. I'm just going to switch to a blank version of this cue sheet just to show you it. So all we need to do is just come in here, we just copy, time code in, copy the length, and you can see that this formula has automatically calculated the duration of that cue in seconds, which is then going to be used on the music details sheet to fill in the exact music cue duration. As you'll see here, I've also got to calculate the video duration, I'm able to calculate that off the video in and the video out. And again, that's a simple matter of finding the in of the actual scene, copying from the time code up the top, and then finding the out of the scene and copying that time code. And then again, going back to the actual cue sheet, you'll see that we have the video clip duration calculated as well. So I'm going to make this blank cue sheet available for you to use as you wish. All you really want to do is just come into the technical details and then just do select the first row, go down to how many cues you want, command D, and you've got a full cue sheet ready to get filled in. Similar thing you can do here on the music one. Again, select down, command D, and then you can go in and put your own details. If you have any comments on this cue sheet and improvements you might suggest, then please use the comment section below. Another last thing that you will notice in my cue sheet here is that I've got information about a CAE number, and a tune code. This is information that you get from PRS. So let me just show you my PRS account so you can see how I added this information into PRS and then added it to the cue sheet. Going into my PRS, we're gonna go register or amend works. So these are the previous registrations that I did. Let me just show you quickly how to register a new work in PRS. Register a new work. So the way I did this, I took the full cue title and actually made that as an alternative title. And then I take away the queue number and that becomes the work title. And then also another alternative title I gave was the name of the film itself. We've got the duration in minutes and seconds, which we can grab from the cue sheet here. So it's one minute and 25. It isn't an ident, it doesn't have any samples, but it is film and TV music. And again, we can add in the film title. Go to next. Because I'm the composer and the publisher in this case, I get 100% of these royalties. There might be a split in your case. In this case, there isn't any activity on this work yet. I haven't published it, it hasn't gone out yet. And I haven't got any known preferred USA licensing. Actually then when I was filling this in, I would have done multiple titles based on this registration, yes. And that would allow me to do the rest of the cue sheet. And then I just get a summary of the overall registration. Now, this might not be something that you need to do because typically this would be the film publisher that does all of this work. However, because this is an independent film, I had to do quite a lot of this myself. And then in terms of submitting the cue sheet itself, all I needed to do here was do file download as a PDF. And then I just want to make sure that I'm picking a number of the sheets. So I'm going to do workbook and just include the production details, music details and guidance and export. 
and that looks a bit like this and then I can just send this PDF over to PRS and it has all the information they need. Now you might have noticed there was also this rolled up section here. In some cases some films don't have all of the lists of the cues, they just roll them up by composer and so you can see here I've got a roll up for myself and then some of the other songs. This is just a sum of all of the details where it matched my name. And if we just go back over to PRS, you can see, if I go search cue sheets, and we look in the cue sheets, we can see we've got the cue sheet here with all of the data that I provided. I would love to hear your experience of managing cues and cue sheets, so please do use the comments section below. What delivery formats have you had in different projects? Do you have any tips for registering cues and cue sheets with PROs? If you've enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.